everyone. Welcome to episode number four. Today what we're going to do is we're going to get into adding some fasteners and some pillar supports, ejector guides, so you can see how to add some of the very basic and most used components in the mold. So let's start off with adding some screws. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my section B, is there's a couple ways to add screws, and I want to show both, both options. So if we go into our add command, and we go to fasteners, and we're going to go ahead and pick a socket cap screw. We have several different fasteners in here, um, with dowels, uh, shoulder bolts, uh, button head screws, flat head screws. We also have our socket cap screws, and we also have the socket cap screws and, but and button head cap screws can also be placed without counterbores. So we're going to go ahead and place with a counterbore in this case. I'm going to pick a quarter inch screw. And if you read along, along the conversation bar in Key Creator, it will let you know, it will give you direction on what to do next. So it's a great learning tool, um, and once you do it a few times, then eventually becomes so natural you don't even notice the conversation bar anymore. But this allows you to follow along as you learn how to use the features. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the line or face for head side of screw. So the difference between the two is selecting a line is if you're putting your screws in in 2D. Selecting a face is if you're putting them in 3D. And we're going to look at both of those. Obviously right now we're doing it in 2D, so we're going to select the line. So it wants to know where's the head going to start. The head's going to start here. Next it wants to know is where does the thread start. The thread starts here. Now what we're going to do is place a screw. So where I put my cursor in this direction doesn't matter. I can place the screw anywhere I want. It knows that the screw starts here and here. So where my cursor is up and down also doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my screw here. That's it. Just like that. So it didn't matter where my cursor was up and down. This is how I would put that screw in. If I, place, if I pick with my cursor up here, it doesn't matter. It's the same. Right? If I have my cursor down here, it's the same. Okay? It doesn't make any difference. So it understands that that screw has to start here, the counter bar has to end there, the third hole has to end there, and the thread has to start here. It knows that. So we've got ahead, we put the screws in, fantastic. Now these are all done in 3D, in 2D, everything all simultaneously. So if you look at my core plan view, you're going to see those screws are in there. We're going to delete them. So now what we want to do is we're going to go and do them the exact same thing, this time in 3D. So this is really cool. So what we can do is we're going to go in here, say add a screw. I'm going to pick a quarter inch screw again. And just going to flip around so you can see it. I'm going to pick the bottom face of my core block. That's where the screw is going to start. Okay? It's the exact same questions. It's just in this case asking you face or head. So it's the same command whether you do it in 2D or 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and select this face. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bottom face of the insert. It doesn't matter which direction I'm looking at everything in. Okay. I'm going to accept that. Now, where do you want that screw to be? It's the exact same thing. So by using my snap, I can ensure that everything is being placed at a nominal position. Do you want to change anything? No, I do not. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the screw is at the same distance from here to here on this side, same distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a line at the midpoint of this insert, and I'm going to use my copy command. So I'm going to go in here to copy, and we have several copy commands for copying all kinds of different things. I really, really suggest you play with these commands and get familiar with them. We will do a tutorial eventually on them. And what we're going to do in this case, though, is we're going to mirror copy about a line. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick that command, I'm going to pick the screw, and I can do this once again in 2D or 3D, doesn't matter. And I'm going to mirror copy it about this line, like that. That's it. Just like that, we have our screws. In. So they are in 3D, they're in 2D, they're in core plan view, they're in section B. They are in core plan view. Go to section B, they're in there. Go to my 3D, they show components. There's my screws. Okay. If I turn on just my insert, there's just the threads. It understands which one belongs in which solid. Okay. I'm going to go to my core block. There's my counterbars. Okay. It's all taken care of automatically. 
my materials is being populated at the same time. Everything is being taken care of all at the same time. So that's adding socketed cap screws. Adding flathead cap screws and buttonhead cap screws works exactly the same way. Um, and uh, you get the exact same functionality out of, out of all those commands. So now what we're going to do is we want to add dowels. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to pick dowel. And all I need to do in this case is tell it where the mating line is. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the line I want to place it. And now it's asking where do I want to put that dowel. What I can do is I can stay in this same command and I can switch to my cavity plan view. Okay, so that I can place it in that cavity plan view. So I'm still in that same command. I just changed my drawings. So I can do things in 2D. I can swap between 2D and 3D while I'm doing commands. This is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to place, using my snap to keep everything nominal, I'm going to place my dowel in this location, and I'm going to pick the size I want, I want a 3 inch dowel, I think that should be fine, and it places it, just like that. And you can see the dowel is there in 2D. So now I'm going to go back to my copy commands, and we have what's called copy quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that, and what I can do is I can pick this dowel, and I can tell it I want it to be copied to this quadrant. We spoke about quadrants in an earlier tutorial. Uh, so just as a refresher, quadrant being the four quadrants of the tool. So looking in our plan view, this is one quadrant, this is one quadrant, this is a quadrant, and that's a quadrant. So by picking this dowel, what I'm telling it is I want it to be symmetrically opposite in a specific quadrant. So if I want it to be over here in this quadrant, it doesn't matter where my cursor is as long as I'm within the quadrant. So I can pick right here near the center of the tool, but the dowel will still end up over here. Dowel is over here. Okay, so quadrants is a really, really cool way to work with your design and ensure that everything is symmetrical. So now I've gone ahead and I've deleted that dowel because I want to show you the other quadrant option. So if I go into my mirror copy quadrants and I pick on that dowel, the other option was indicate quadrant, which is what we utilized, and enter for all. So if I go ahead and say enter, all four quadrants now are populated with that dowel. So now when I go to my 3D, go to my cavity block and the top plan plate, say show components, there they are. Okay. I go to my material list, and that dowel right there. So really, really easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to uh, save that off. So now I'm making progress on my design while I'm learning how to use these features. Really, really impressive. Okay, so now from there, what we're going to do is add some pillar supports and some ejector guides. Okay, so I'm going to go to my core plan view. Once again, you can do these in 2D or 3D. It's whatever's easiest for you. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this pillar, these couple pillar supports. And uh, I'm going to delete my ejector guides as well. And so by going to my modify and saying delete, I click one ejector guide, right? If I go up here and I say all type, all four of those ejector guides go away. So I don't have to click every single one of them, especially if you have a lot of components. If you wanted to get rid of like all your water in your core block, you can click one water line, say all type, and all the water will get deleted. Very simple. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and add some pillar supports. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add pillar support. And I just want standard ones. I'm just making them out of coal roll. I'm not, uh, I'm not purchasing any, any kinds. This tool is actually beyond sizes that DME um, provides. And I'm going to go with a two inch. By picking a two inch, it'll just look a lot different from the ones that are there now. Go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to place, place one right here. Now, once again, I can go to my copy commands and copy to all four quadrants just by hitting Enter. So now I have these four pillar supports. So that's it for adding pillar supports. You can just, you just click in a plan view and place them, and everything's taken care of. So if I go ahead and I, and I pull up my rails and my bottom clan plate, and I'm going to say show components, that way the pillar supports show up. As you can see, everything's there. All the right height, pillar supports are the right height, the screws to the pillar supports are in there, the counterbars are in there, and our configuration tool that we have, you can configure which size screws with which size pillar supports. And and which, how much clearance, right? Because the clearance is also added to the ejector plate and retainer plate. You can configure 
What size clearance you want by default to go on the different size floor supports. This will ensure that everything that goes to your shop floor or to your customer is consistent all the way through. Okay. All right, so we've got heavy, we've added some, we've added them, some uh, floor supports. Let's add some ejector guides. And in this case, we're going to do this in 3D just to change it up a little bit. Okay. So I'm in my 3D and I'm going to go to my, my ad box again. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my ejector guides. I'm going to go with an inch and a quarter ejector guide. I can choose between vendors. I can choose between metric. I can swap between metric. I can have half metric, half inch throughout my job. It doesn't matter. I can do everything in metric or inches. And I have vendors for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. I'm going to place my ejector guide. And it works just the same way. This is as if I was doing it in my 2D print. It's no different. And I go over here to my ad and I say mirror to all the quadrants by hitting enter. All four quadrants get filled in and that's it. My 3D is done. I have ejector guides and I have these pillar supports. I have my 2D drawings are updated. And my material list is updated. I now have a set of four two inch pillar supports that I have. And I have my guided ejector bushing and my guided ejector pin in there. Just like that, we've added components. So very, very easy to add components to XMD. The intelligence is there. It understands the lengths that it needs to be. It understands what plates they belong in, all very automatic. And that's how you add some very standard components into XMD very, very quickly. Thank you. Have a good day.